story that is definitely making the rounds, especially on social media. NASA providing an explanation for a strange sound reported by astronaut Butch Wilmore coming from the Starliner. Do you want to play this for you here right now so you can give it a listen? Uh, There's a strange noise coming through the speaker. And I didn't know if you could connect into the Starliner and let me uh, keep mic and let you hear. I don't, I don't know what, what's making it. Hear that? At negative, Butch. We did not hear anything. That. All right, Butch, that one came through. It was kind of like a pulsing noise, almost like a sonar ping. All right, that was just a portion of the conversation obtained by TMZ, but NASA receiving no question, a lot of questions about this. So they posted on X or Twitter saying a pulsing sound from a speaker in Boeing Starliner spacecraft heard by NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore aboard the International Space Station has stopped. The feedback from the speaker was the result of an audio configuration between the space station and Starliner. The space station audio system is complex, allowing multiple spacecraft and modules to be interconnected, and it's common to experience noise and feedback. The crew is asked to contact mission control when they hear sounds originating in the comm system. The speaker feedback, Wilmore reported, has no technical impact to the crew, Starliner, or station operations, including Starliner's uncrewed undocking from the station no earlier than Friday, September 6th. A lot to discuss related to Starliner and the future of space travel, so I do want to bring in a friend of the show. Ken Kramer is the founder and managing editor of Space Up Close and a research scientist. Thank you so much for taking the time, as always, to join us here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm always glad to talk to your audience. All right, well, first off, I want to talk about that audio because it was circulating all over social media. You had just about everyone commenting, but from NASA's explanation there, it sounds like it's not a huge deal and it's kind of mystery solved, right? That's right. It's much ado about nothing. It's just built up to get clicks for stories, um, just feedback like maybe you and I would have uh, or you would have with some of your other correspondents and, and speakers. So it's it's really nothing to worry about. There are serious problems, but this is not an issue. And we know that Butch and Sonny will not be coming home with the Starliner when it does return to Earth in just a few days. What led NASA overall to make what I imagine was a very tough decision? Yeah, now this is a serious issue, unlike the sounds, okay? So... As you probably know, uh, after they reached orbit and while they were ready to dock with the International Space Station, um, they had issues with helium leaks, five helium leaks developed, and several of the thrusters failed. And they need those thrusters um, to dock, to maneuver, to fire, so they can dock at the ISS, and they need the helium to pressurize the tanks so the thrusters will fire. So. Um, they did tests in orbit, okay, hot fire tests, and found out that the, uh, the thrusters work fine. These are the reaction control system thrusters. There's 28 of them, 27 out of 28 work fine in two tests, and there were no further helium leaks. But um, they also decided on to err on the side of safety because when they did ground tests at White Sands Missile, uh, range out in New Mexico that found that there were these Teflon seals that expanded a little bit. And when that happens, they could potentially block the fuel. And if they block the fuel, then they cannot fire and they were overheating. And if that happens, they can't get home because they need those thrusters to slow the spacecraft down. It's a braking maneuver so that they can then re-enter the atmosphere the Earth's atmosphere and return home and land pinpoint. They need to have a, you know, pretty much a pinpoint landing in the desert. This is a land landing. This will be the, the first time American astronauts land on land um, in, in the desert, other than the space shuttle. This will be on, on um, airbags out in the desert. So it's very different from anything U.S. has done before. So uh, looking back on it, when they saw that uh, that uh, Teflon uh, expansion, and they don't know how much worse it would get during the real firing, because the tests they did were very short. They were intense, but they were short. 
So they decided NASA to err on the side of safety. It was a tough call. There were good arguments on both sides. Tough call, but you know, learning the lessons from Challenger and Columbia, we want the astronauts to come home. They must come home because if they don't, it'll be a, a terrible day and it would endanger the program and destroy the family. So we, we can't have that happen. So although it's almost certainly safe for the astronauts to come home on Starliner, but that's Boeing's opinion, because of all the testing that was done, they feel it would have been okay. But NASA can't afford to to have this happen. So that's that's why they um, that's why the decision was made, and we can talk about that um, in in your future questions. But Starliner will now come home. Uh, later this week, no earlier than the 6th, there'll be a briefing uh, tomorrow, I believe, on the 4th, and NASA will update us and the media on on uh, the exact plan. I imagine that a lot of eyes will be on Starliner, assuming it does return on the 6th, to see how it lands, if it lands safely. I imagine so many people will be watching it very, very closely. Absolutely. Everybody's going to be watching it. Everybody who's interested, everybody who cares about space and science and human life will all be watching it very intently. Luckily, there won't be any humans on board. So if there is a mishap, um, then it, it will not be a bad day. It'd be a bad day for Boeing, but a lot, not a bad day for astronauts. So yeah, everybody will be watching. Most likely, it will be safe. And that's what we all hope is that it'll be a safe landing. And But then after that, um, Starliner will have to undergo extensive modifications because these problems cannot happen again with the leaks and the uh, the thrusters um, failing to fire. So the next mission of the Starliner was going to be in February. It's now delayed indefinitely, at least until August. They launch every six months. And so um, they'll have to prove that any changes they make are reliable and robust and can be uh, repeated safely. So it's going to have a lot of downstream consequences, and I think that's what should happen all along, and that's what's been decided now uh, by NASA and Boeing. So Starliner 1 will launch no sooner than one year from now. In the meantime, you know, we have the Crew Dragon. That's why NASA has two ways to space. They have the SpaceX Crew Dragon and the Boeing Starliner. It's called dissimilar redundancy. That way, if one goes down, the other can still launch. So. The consequence of that is um, another thing you wanted to know about, you know, what what what's coming up? Well, besides the Starliner coming home, the next Crew Dragon has to go up because um, that was what Butch and Suni will come home on. But it'll only go up with two astronauts instead of four. So they can leave two seats empty so that when they uh, so they'll be available next February 2025, Butch and Suni will take those those seats. And so there's a lot of downstream impacts from this and the two that were were taken off the mission they'll have to fly at a later date so there'll be impacts with the reshuffling of the crews but you know that's a lot better than the alternative I do want to talk about something that so many people have mentioned and i want to get your take on it because we've heard so many people say that butch and suni are stranded in space can i get your take on that they're absolutely not stranded. They're happy to be there. I'm glad you asked me. Every other's, every story has it, and I tell all these outlets the same thing. They're not stranded. They're not stuck. They could come home. There's another crew capsule up there, Crew 8. In an emergency, they would have come home on the Starliner because they did those tests, hot fire tests in orbit. Why do they do it in orbit? Because once it separates from the ISS, the service module and the crew module, um, on the way back down, they also separate. So you can't collect any more data. So they can only do those tests to find out what's wrong with the Starliner when it's docked at the at the ISS. So they can come home. They're not stuck. They're not stranded. In fact, they're extremely happy to be there. Um, yeah, eight weeks turned in, um, I'm sorry, eight days turned into eight weeks, eight months. If you're going to be an astronaut, you got to be flexible. And believe me, they're happy to be up there longer. Eight days was always too short. So uh, they'll miss the holidays, but you know what? If you're in the military and you're in the astronaut corps, that's life, that's the way it is. So this is their probably their last mission. So every day they're up there is a gift. And this just happened, you know, last year, 
Frank Rubio, NASA astronaut, he had to stay for a year instead of six months because the Soyuz capsule, the Russian Soyuz capsule, developed a coolant leak, and they weren't sure the astronauts could come home. That would be too hot, and they would die from, from the heat. So what Russia did was send up an uncrewed capsule, and then uh, they brought the uh, the other one home. And so then they stayed a year, those three astronauts and cosmonauts. And so now the result is Frank Rubio has the American space flight record for longest duration by a male astronaut from NASA. So he's the record holder uh, due, to, due to that. So I'm sure he's happy about that. And I'm And I know that the the crews are safe and the families are praying for them, but the families are happy that their loved ones are in space doing what they want to do. The ISS is all about science. I'm a scientist. They're contributing. They're extra hands to get things done that wouldn't be done otherwise. And the ISS is all about helping humanity. So believe me, when you played that tape at the beginning and Suni was jumping all over the place with her hair, that's the way she feels and that's the way she feels today. So people don't have to be worried. If the crew dragon went down, now that would be a problem. And there was an issue a couple of days ago and last month that the uh, you know the SpaceX Falcon 9 suffered two rocket failures and so it was temporarily grounded. And then you couldn't launch Crew 9 and that would be a complicated situation. But everything's back online now. Hopefully everything will work. With space, you're always on the edge of disaster. So you must be constantly vigilant. It's not like flying on an airplane. You're putting your life on the line and you know it. And if you don't want to do that and you don't want to stay a long time and all you want to be is a tourist, this is not for you. Okay? They're happy to be there. And that is one of many reasons I will never be going to space. Ken Kramer, yes. thank you so much for and taking the time to, to be go. here. Uh, if we anything got else? One minute. One more thing really interesting yeah, is your Europa Clipper is going to launch on October 10th, mm -hmm. okay? That's going to look for life on Jupiter's moon Europa. It's going to launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9. It is the biggest science mission from NASA this year. So you want to you want to follow that because we want to find out are we alone in the universe? Europa and Mars are two of the prime spots. So that's what's coming up also. Ooh, we'll be looking forward to that then. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us today. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you.